I'm Mark Kelly and Mr. Saltwater Tank. Come and tell me half at saltwateraquarium.com. One of my favorite parts of any saltwater aquarium build is the plumbing phase. It's like an adult Lego kit. You got this big pile of parts, and if you do things correctly, you end up with a plumbed aquarium that doesn't leak. Easy, except when there's something in the way. In my case, there was the wall that divided the lobby from the front office tank. Not the end of the world, as I told the GC who built the wall where I wanted outlets and pipes and had plenty of photos of the wall being built. That meant I knew the wall was completely open inside, which made my job easier. Since the Saltwater Aquarium 700 was a peninsula tank, I wanted water to return to the tank from the sump on the far end of the tank. That means I had to make a run of pipe all the way down the length of the tank, which is really easy when the tank is empty. Just hop on in and start plumbing. There's no way I was going to make a run of 12 feet of pipe without supporting it, which meant attaching sections of Unistrip to the wall. That meant finding a stud, which can be done with a stud finder, and sometimes the magnet trick is just more reliable and easier. If the magnet doesn't stick, there's no stud at that spot. With the supporting strut in place, on went the 12 foot section of pipe. Who needs a helper when you have Unistrip to lend a hand? Sorry, kid. With that done, it was time to turn my attention to the drain lines. The overflow box on the Saltwater Aquarium 700 has two two inch drains and one inch and a half emergency overflow. I've never had to use an emergency overflow, but a little backup never hurts. That meant we're gonna have a fair amount of pipe stacked on the wall, which is cool with me. I love stacked pipe. It's sexy. I walk into rooms and I look at pipes and I'm like, ooh, that's cool. Now, since we had all those pipes on the wall, the drain lines are going to set the height of all the other plumbing pipes in the build, which means that those drain lines had to go in first. And we couldn't forget about the display refugium. The display refugium had the 20 inch trigger tie line overflow box, which meant it had three one and a half inch lines coming out of it. Now that's more than enough capacity for the low flow refugium and extra capacity never hurts. Adding in the three drain lines coming from the display tank, plus the lines from the display refugium, that meant a lot of pipes on the wall, which we're okay with. Current debate is whether or not to cover all these pipes, as we think they look cool, and the build may look more finished if we hide these behind a false wall. The refusion didn't need to come online yet, so now it's waiting until it's needed. I would gotten all the pipes to the wall, and now it was time to plumb them into the sump. Now I designed the Bashy sump to accept the multiple drain lines, and once the drains were in, it was time to start plumbing the return lines back to the tank, starting at the Abyss A200 return pump. In my experience, the Abyss pumps are the most reliable on the market, and reliability is key in a return pump. No return pump? That means the heart of your system is gone. Working back from the Abyss A200, I connected the two Bashi media reactors, one for carbon and one for GFO. The return line then goes to the wall and gets connected to the return line that I'd put on previously. With the plumbing done, what I needed to do next was get moving on the rock and sand in the tank because once that's in, I can start the slow process of filling the tank with RODI water from the saltwateraquarium.com RODI unit. No bare bottom tank here, that's too sterile of a look for us, so it's time to start with the sand, which I'll discuss in the next episode.